All right, guys, so uh, we've made the trip home. Everybody's set up. I'm going to feed them here in just a minute. But right now, and these guys have been in the mail for 48 hours. And you might wonder how they can do that with a little bird like this. Well, they're actually born with quite a bit of yolk uh, still active inside them. They have an, an amount of nutrient that they can gain. They'll last about 48 hours. So in the first 48 hours, they'll eat and drink a little bit if it's available. And they actually ship them with a little bit of a nutrient uh, moisture uh, thing in a couple shade in just a second. It's all empty, so they obviously used it. But uh, they don't need a lot. So they're able, just like they don't get fed in the egg or watered in the egg, they kind of continue to live that way for about two days. And that's how long it takes the post office to get them to us. So it works out just fine. Uh, you can see I have the water system in place. And that's actually a feeder. We couldn't find the other water, but I actually kind of dig this. I only have a bottle in there to keep them from getting in the big hole in the middle. That took them about two seconds to figure out, by the way. But since they can stick their head in there and get water, it's also keep that topped off. This is a pretty good way to water them. It might be actually better than a standard waterer because they're already trouncing around in there. And you can see they're drinking. And uh, so let's feed them. Let's see if they'll eat right away for us or not. Usually they will. I like to use these really long feeders. We can move everybody here. Come on, guys. Let's go. Move. Move. Let's want to crush everybody. Yeah, come on. No, don't go back in there. There you go. So I like to use these long feeders because everybody can find a spot and everybody can eat. And with ducks, it's really for their convenience. With chickens, this is actually important. You brew too many chickens at a time, and they can competitive over the feeders, and they will actually start pecking each other in the eyeball. So we'll get the other feeder in there in a second. It'll look just like this. You don't really need to see it. I do want to talk about what I'm using to keep them warm. Now, a lot of people have recommended these really expensive uh, heat systems for birds, and uh, say it's a lot more like a mother hen, but they're a couple hundred bucks, especially if you need two of them. Now, I have a standard uh, light fixture there that you can get for about seven bucks at any feed store, most hardware stores, and it's on, and it's keeping them warm, and watch this. It's warm, but it's not hurting me. It's not burning me. I mean, right there, if you touch it long enough, it'll start to burn you a little bit. What's in these? The little device I got is a 100 watt ceramic heater. It doesn't actually produce light. That way, they'll actually sleep. It doesn't get that hot, but it's going to make the area below it right about 98 degrees. Just like clockwork down here, it's very warm. They can move in and out, and they can huddle together. And those things cost about another seven bucks. They're available on Amazon.com or most pet stores. And if you need more warmth, they make them up in higher wattages. But 100 watts should be just fine. That's some of my reptile days. So that way they get a nice passive warmth without all that bright, intense light. Nobody burns themselves, including you, the keeper. Everybody's eating already. You see, they don't have to be taught to eat. They're not like turkey bolts. Let's get the feed into the other guys. See if we can do it without... Well, everybody's over to one side except one little girl there. All right, come on, girl. Come on, girly girl. All right. So, let's see how long it takes these guys to figure out food's available. They've all settled down already. Let's. <laughs> Here. Here. Uh, these guys are the, these are the B team, I guess. Um, they actually seem like they want to nap already. And uh, it won't take long though. There, somebody's figuring it out. It's inside there, little girl. Not the top. It's fun to watch them. Their first, there it is. That's it. Okay, she's in now. Everybody's like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? What's in there? And uh, from there, they'll take it themselves. We we'll just have to keep an eye on them. Real quick, our brooder set up. These are just really big Rubbermaid tubs. They're inexpensive. We have two to give everybody room, and then for cleaning. When I want to clean that brooder out, all these guys, or girls actually, they're all girls, go in here, clean this brooder, get it all ready to go, put everybody in here, clean that brooder, put half of them back over, and uh, we're keeping them inside for a few weeks. These are our future profit center here. we got a lot of customers wanting duck eggs. Again, these are hybrid layer, uh, white hybrid layers from Metzer Farms, and uh, day one of the Duck Chronicles. 
We'll be back every day as they come up with at least a brief video of what's going on.